this is home for the next couple of days. A cracking little campsite. Bizarrely enough, I'm the only one here. Now I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong. Panticay is how I believe it's pronounced. It's about seven miles from Dolgello. That's probably pronounced wrong as well. I have a few days off work and decided I needed to get away. A little bit odd for me because normally getting away involves jumping on a plane and going somewhere. But I've found a place that I've been wanting to get to for a few months now called Creganon Lakes. And every time I've had a weekend free, the weather just hasn't been playing ball. It's maybe slightly windier than I would like, but it's hot. It's 24 degrees. The sun is shining. There is a breeze, but not much. So I thought, ah, oh, stuff it. Jump in the car and head off, see what's what. So I'm based here for a couple of nights. I may stay for longer. We're in Wales, by the way. Um, I may head off after a couple of days here back up into Snowdonia. There's a couple of places in Snowdonia that we passed through when we were here um, when we did um, Lake Idwell and the other one that I can't remember the name of. I thought, oh yes, I'd quite like to do that and there's certainly unfinished business with Lynn Ogwin. But this is lovely. The pitch isn't 100% flat. So I'm probably going to end up rolling downhill, but it doesn't matter. And as I say, I'm the only one here. And I have allowed myself a little luxury this week. I've got an electric hookup because I'm not convinced my batteries are going to last. And if I do as much photography down here as I did when I was in Italy, I'm going to need somewhere to offload um, vlogs and photos. So I bought the laptop with me. So at least I can hook up. It's a bit sad that, isn't it? Camping with an electric hookup. But it's kind of the best of both worlds. So I've just pitched. I'm just gonna chill for five minutes and then I'm gonna go off and see if I can find Craganon Lakes. I'm not really certain if it's a sunrise or sunset location. It could well be both. From what I've seen of it, there are shots to be had across the lake and from above it. I think there's two lakes and you can get a little way above it and get a view across them. So it could work well, uh, well for both. And I was talking to the, the helpful gentleman who runs this place and the midges have been out in force apparently. I'm kind of hoping they're not as vicious as Scottish midges or Lake District midges for that matter. So I've taken the antihistamine and doused myself into smidge. I have bought some citronella candles as well, which I may just dot around the tent to keep the little swines out of the tent. <sighs> when we were in the Lake District last weekend, which you haven't seen the vlog from because the weather was just appallingly bad and we didn't really get any photography done, I got absolutely eaten alive by bloody horse flies. The midges seemed to leave me alone, but the horse flies attacked my legs <laughs> through my socks and my trousers. And it looks like someone's been at my ankles with a chainsaw. It's really not a pretty sight. <sighs> So hopefully they'll leave me alone and say, I've had to take the antihistamines because I am allergic to something in smidge. But I would prefer to come out in a rash than get bitten to pieces. Not sure that's entirely logical. So I'll leave it there and I will catch up with you when I'm up at the lakes. I'll give you a look round and see what's what. See you later.
Well, before the light disappears altogether, and excuse the wind, it is a lot breezier than was forecast. I thought I'd just have a quick catch up. I've had a good wander around the lake. It's striking me at the moment as a very frustrating place. This is the first time I've been, I'm just going to keep stood here because the wind is um, going to interrupt the, the audio. There's lots of beautiful scenes, but I'm struggling with foreground. Now, over my, over this shoulder, there's a boathouse here. There's another boathouse in the far lake as well, and that's even worse for trying to find a composition. There's a lovely hill behind it, but that's about it. Now, the plan is to come here for sunrise, and according to the photographer's ephemeris, the sun's going to be coming in over here, so it should put some nice light on the side of this boathouse. But the photographer's ephemeris, <laughs> ephemeris was telling me that the sun was going down over there earlier on, and it was going down over here, up here. So I think something might need calibrating in my phone. So as I say, the plan for tomorrow is sunrise here. I may try and use some of these stones to lead up to the boathouse, or I may go over to the other side and shoot straight across using the 70-200. You may not be able to make this out, and if I get my finger in the right place, there's actually a stone wall leading up here to the mountain from behind. We were oh, you know, behind the boathouse. <laughs> it's too late in the day for this. And I thought there was going to be some nice light. Uh, sorry, there has been some nice light, but there's not really been any colour in the sky. We've got a nice glow in the distance, and the other side of the hill. Where are we? The side of this hill is, I believe it's Barmouth, and views straight out across the ocean. I've just done a shot using this little group of stones here, shooting out to this bunch of trees and the hills. There's lovely layers in the background there. And I didn't use the 10 stop because it's the, the, the ambient light is fading all the time. So I just popped on the polarizer. A 0.6 soft grad pulled down at an angle for, or rather to even out the light from the sky against the darker foreground. And then I put a 0.3 all the way down, sorry, a 0.6 filter all the way down because I've managed to break my six stop. <laughs> Might have to buy another one. And I think that kind of quite worked okay. And it's one of those where it looked better with the polarizer turned turned off so there were or there were no reflections to be had anyway but you could actually see the stones under the water and the water was slightly darker with the polarizer turned all the way on the expanse of water was just sort of white which didn't really look right and because it wasn't a long exposure i think it was six or eight seconds there was still a little bit of movement in the water which was quite nice i think it quite suited the image so anyway i'm beginning to waffle so I'm going to pack up and head home, have a cup of tea, grab some kip, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. I'm getting eaten alive by the midges. Let's get some light. Well, that was a pretty wonderful morning. I've come back up, as I said, to Craigannon Lakes. I was really hopeful when I woke up there was not a breath of wind, and there still isn't. But there's movement on the water, which I'm finding a little bizarre. Let's see if I can just spin you around without losing you. I don't get that. There's not a breath of wind, the midges are out in force, I am smothered in smidge and itching like that. But the sunrise, oh, was just perfect. Now, I'm still not convinced which way the sun's coming up. 
fairly certain it's over that way. And in the background we have mist rolling in and just here you can see it creeping along the edge of the, the hillside. So I decided not to go down and shoot the boathouse because there's actually no light on that yet. But we had some gorgeous light up here. So I settled for doing what I don't normally do, which is panoramics. I've done a vertical one and I've done a horizontal one using the 10 to 20. Now I know everybody says shoot panoramics in vertical format, portrait format. But I seem to get better results doing it in landscape. I don't understand why. So I thought I'd cut my losses and try both. But yeah, and the campsite's 10 minutes drive down that way. Well, 10 minutes drive, five minutes drive. The gentleman at the farm said it was a 20 minute walk. Yeah, maybe if you're really fit, but it's all uphill and it's steep uphill. Unless there's a shortcut through the woods or something but that's a good 25 maybe 30 minute walk by my standards snail's pace so yeah this this has been a good morning now in terms of settings just give me one second so in terms of setting i've been shooting at f13 and approximately a third of a second didn't put the polarizer filter on i've learned that polarizers with sunrise sorry with panoramics really not a good idea so i just had the 0.6 and nd reverse grad on because you can see the sky is considerably lighter than the foreground if i hadn't been doing a panoramic i probably would have put the the polarizer on to sort out the reflections down here but it wasn't necessary now i'm going to spin you around see if i can show you what i've got Right, so if this is going to work, and I'm not guaranteeing, here we go. So I did a couple, the, panoramic, the, the vertical composition one you're not going to see. But the road at the bottom of the, of the um, image acts as quite a nice lead through line. I realised I chopped a bit of it off, so I redid it with a wider composition. I even got the camper van in at the end. Um, and that was at 10 mil. Let me turn you back around again. Now I can just feel the breeze starting to pick up, which is great because all the midges have disappeared. I don't think they're quite as vicious as Scottish ones. So anyway, that was quite a successful morning. I'm going to wait for the sunlight to pop its head up and see if we can get some light on the boathouse which is just nestling around there. I say at the moment it's completely in darkness. There's no point in going down there anyway. There's some reeds and rushes on the far side. Where are we? Mm, no, that's not right. There we go. There's some reeds and rushes down here with a little bit of foreground interest, but there is a huge expanse of water. I am tempted to go in tight uh, using the 70 to 200. But we'll see. So I'm going to sign off. Catch up with you guys in a bit. Bye.